There are a number of major functionality updates with the 1.4 release of ArcGIS Pro. It is a connected desktop that's tightly integrated within your enterprise. Currently, we're over downtown Portland, Oregon, using the World Imagery Base Map from ArcGIS Online. We have an older aerial image that we need to georeference to then digitize some features from. Using the Fit to Display option, we can walk the image into the right area, although not exactly where it needs to go. If you look at the west side, you can see that it's clearly shifted to the east, and it's at the wrong scale. The next step is to run the Auto Georeference tool. Now, as the tool is running, I want to call specific attention to the fact that I am georeferencing an image stored locally on my desktop against a service coming from my portal, in this case, the imagery base map. A quick visual inspection of the image shows that it was transformed correctly. Now, we georeference this image because we need to digitize the footprint of this older building that has since been replaced. We're going to capture this information inside of an existing feature service coming from our portal. To help us digitize the footprint more accurately, we're going to use a new feature of Pro 1.4, the editing grid. By dropping it on a corner of the building and aligning it with a wall, the grid will help ensure that we are creating parallel and perpendicular lines. While digitizing, the cursor is nudged through snapping to fall either directly onto the grid or to parallel lines inferenced from the grid. As a side note, it's an exceptionally useful tool should you find yourself having to digitize live in front of 4,000 people. Uh, quick and well-aligned editing of, image, or of features has never been easier. Moving on to our next enhancement, which is topology. Here, we have a new image, or vector tile base map coming from ArcGIS Online and new parcel and building data layers. We can drag our topology layer onto the map to check for any building footprints that extend beyond their parcel. The Air Inspector makes it easy to identify such issues, like the northern edge of this building here, and presents us with several different options to resolve the error. In this case, we'll choose to remove the overlap to fix the inconsistency. Looking at downtown Portland in 3D, we're going to conduct some QAQC on these multi-patch buildings to see how closely they coincide with some recently collected LIDAR. It looks like this building's rooftop needs some work. The ability to edit multi-patch features is new to the 1.4 release of Pro. Leveraging this function, I can bisect the roof surface of this building and then extrude it to match the LiDAR outline. Once complete, I can save my edits directly from the ribbon. I also want to show you how quickly you can create and edit animations. One convenient way to make an animation is to import your bookmarks directly from a scene. This will launch the new animation timeline which gives us finite control for making adjustments. From here, we can overlay a title and then interactively select how long it will remain on screen by adjusting its length. We can also insert other types of overlays, like dynamic text. In this case, we'll use information on the camera position which I'll go ahead and thin down just to show the height value. Once we've got everything set, we can play our animation and watch as the overlay title and then descriptive camera position text display on screen as we fly over downtown. And of course, we can export our animations to a number of commonly used video formats. Moving on to layouts. ArcGIS Pro supports the use of multiple layouts within a single project. Here we're looking at the same parcel data that we checked earlier for topological errors. Pay attention to the legend and notice that as I switch to different maps in the series, it updates automatically 
to reflect only the features shown in that map's extent. Going to a new data set, this map shows the operating status of various bicycling routes throughout the city. Now, since Pro's first release, people have been asking, when will it support Graticules? Well, I'm happy to show that it now does. Thank you to the one person up front. <laughs> ArcGIS Pro is a connected desktop. With the 1.4 release, we've enhanced what was already a tight integration with your portal to further simplify the process for sharing a web map. If, for example, I wanted to share this map into my portal, I can select from a number of different sharing configurations, exploratory, editable, and visualization. These configurations optimize how our data is published depending on the map's intended use. We're going to share this map as a visualization, therefore it will publish our data as web tile layers. So by now I'm sure you've heard that ArcGIS Pro is a multi-threaded application. Taking advantage of that fact, I'd like to show you another advancement that we've made in regards to sharing. If I wanted to print this bike map layout, I'd export it to a PDF, which is nothing new. What is new, however, is that any vector content in the map, including our vector tile base maps, will remain vector in the PDF. This ensures that we won't lose any clarity in our export, no matter how closely we zoom into it. Checking back on the status of our web map, we can see that it published successfully. And a quick look at the job status pane shows that it's currently still generating the tile cache, so it will be a few more minutes before our web map is ready for use. Once complete, we can search for it inside of our portal, and then we can add it back into Pro or anywhere else to continue working. Now, I'd like to introduce my wingman, Tim Clark, to show other new capabilities with ArcGIS Pro. Thanks, James. We debated who could be Maverick, but we couldn't come up with that. So what I'd like to show, or continue to highlight, is the power of ArcGIS Pro as a component of your distributed, connected ArcGIS enterprise. ArcGIS Pro's improved functionality and new tools make it a tremendous benefit to your workflow. So let's take a look at some data related to wildfires and how ArcGIS Pro can improve those workflows. I want to add to this map some weather stations that are located around this wildfire perimeter on my map. So these weather stations contain daily average summaries of weather, weather conditions. So I want to ask, how can you maximize this rich set of attributes and apply that to the meaning of your symbology? So I want to show you how we can use temperature, wind direction, wind speed, relative humidity, and time, and put that all together into one layer with rich cartography. So I'm going to start by using the smart mapping graduated color option with the temperature field. And so if you're counting, that's going to be attribute number one. So next, I want to set the rotation of my symbols based on the wind direction. But before I can do that, I need to select a more appropriate symbol. And then select a color ramp that works better for temperature from cool to warm. Now I can set the rotation based on that wind direction field. And then I can also set the size of my symbol based on wind speed. So that gets me up to attributes number two and three. So for the fourth attribute, I want to set the transparency of my symbol based on the relative humidity of the weather stations. Now, some people were telling me that that's kind of overkill and I'm exaggerating it, but it's my demo, so I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> so I can set the relative humidity and since these are weather stations around a wildfire, I want the stations with higher humidity to be more transparent. And so now how do I get that fifth element? Well, I can use the time slider to look at the daily changes in weather conditions 
and we can observe the symbol responding as I move through time. So to summarize, I have one layer, five attributes with rich cartography, all made easy with ArcGIS Pro. So now let's take a look at another example of how Arc ArcGIS Pro can improve your workflows. This is an overview map of a wildfire incident, and it contains a point feature class that has all of the features that are collected in a wildfire. So at this scale, I really am only displaying some of the critical items. Typically, you might have to produce multiple products at different scales. For example, I have a half inch to the mile map, which gives me much more detail. So in ArcGIS Pro, the new display filters allows you to define multiple scale-dependent queries on a single layer. So I can define any number of scale ranges, and then I can put any type of query that I want that controls the display of those features. So if I go back to my overview map, and I decide I don't want to show weather stations at this scale, I can simply edit the query. So that's, before I move on, remember I said earlier that ArcGIS Pro is a connected environment. So if we look at the display by source option, you can see that everything in this map is coming from ArcGIS online sources. So now let's look at some national trends in wildfire. This point feature class contains all the reported wildfires over about a 30-year period. The data is symbolized with the new proportional symbol, and it's set relative to the size of the fire. So now even if I zoom in, there's really way too much data here to understand any sort of patterns. I could use traditional geoprocessing techniques like the Summarize Within tool. And here you can see the relative distribution of wildfires within a county boundary. The problem there is that that geoprocessing overlay is static, but the number of fires accumulates throughout the fire season. So what we really need is the ability to dynamically aggregate layers together in our map. So in ArcGIS Pro, we can use the query layer dialog to dynamically aggregate layers. So in my enterprise database, I have the fire points, and I have congressional district polygons. And so to perform a spatial dynamic aggregation, you would write a query like this one, where I'm selecting fields from both tables, I'm summarizing by polygon acreage and the total count of fires. And then I'm using a group by statement. And that group by is grouping the points within the congressional districts. And so now I have a dynamic query layer in my map, and you can symbolize it just like any other layer. So now as points are added to that point feature class throughout the fire season, this layer is going to stay automatically up to date. So what I've shown is just three examples of how ArcGIS Pro can help you create meaningful, beautiful maps and make your workflows easier. So now I want to make the problem a little bit harder and work with bigger data. So this point feature class contains almost a million records of storm cell locations over a 20-year period. And I want to be able to understand patterns in both space and time. So I could run the Create Space Time Cube tool on my desktop. And with a million records, it's going to take quite a while to process. With ArcGIS Pro 1.4, we can leverage ArcGIS Enterprise and run this process on distributed servers. So I can connect to my enterprise servers. And so now I can use the feature analysis tools on those distributed servers 
to run the Create Space Time Cube tool. So the first thing I need to do is specify the output coordinate system for the layer it's going to create. And then I can set the remaining parameters. For my point feature class, I'm going to get my data from my portal. I can specify an output name. And then I can put in the remaining of the parameters, which really specify the size and duration of the analysis. And then I can run the tool. So I'm processing now almost a million records on those distributed servers. So honestly, I really have no idea how long this is going to take to run. But while we watch it, we know that the distributed servers are going to start up multi-threaded processes, and it's running on a three-node server with 24 cores. So the space-time cube tool is aggregating points together in those 60-kilometer space-time bins. As they aggregate, it's looking at both the summary and count of points within those space-time bins across both vertical and horizontal uh, neighborhoods. And it's already finished. So I, I lost a line there, but um, you can see that we were able to create space-time cube in a distributed server on almost a million points in 46 seconds. So to me, that's pretty amazing. So now, finally, let's take a look at the results in 3D. So here we have the space-time cube looking at the hot spots, and we can see that there's a pretty consistent pattern across most of the eastern US. If I zoom into an area around Denver, we can look at the cube, and we can see that there's kind of an oscillating pattern of hot spots. They're on and off and so on. And I can also see that the area of impact by those storms is also growing geographically over time. So what James and I showed you today is how ArcGIS Pro is ready and able to be a strong component of your ArcGIS enterprise. Thank you. <laughs>